Welcome back. Welcome back to our special coverage of the National Plebiscite in Chile. Now let's go back to our correspondent Alejandro Kirk in the capital Santiago. We are waiting for the first voting stations to close and Alejandro is at Plaza Dignidad in Santiago. Hello Alejandro. Hello. Uh, you, you can see here this is already packed and it hasn't even begun. The people uh, are uh, waiting for results and they um, are only just moving over to this Plaza Dignidad to celebrate what is widely seen as a, a landmark victory for the forces of change in this country. The battle for the change is only beginning, but for the moment, for tonight, this is the atmosphere. Let's take a look. As you can see, there is a carnival, people dancing, people, um, bands are playing uh, different sorts of bands, and everybody seems to be having a good time. But also, for what we have perceived, also very wary of what the future may bring to the country. This uh, will like, most likely, this victory um, accelerate uh, radicalized positions on the far right and the fascist system, the fascist elements that have been increasingly active in the last um, few months and especially the last few weeks, threatening people, beating people, uh, threatening to kidnap children. So um, if and when the result is what seems to be uh, that will get in some, somehow worse. But on the other hand, you will have a clear majority of people for radical change for a new constitution that is democratic and that um, gets rid for good um, of the neoliberal system imposed in this country over the last 40 years. Today, 25th of um, October, also marks Two, there are two ephemerides. One is that one year ago, uh, over a million and a half people were demonstrating uh, right here their will to what uh, to, ha to what is now happening to actually happen. Happen, and the next day, President Piñera intended to try to go up this huge demonstration. Um, showing himself as grateful and part of it. Nobody, of course, believed it, and the situation, that speech, only worsened the situation. But now, today, we have, again, President Piñera saying that uh, this uh, constitutional change is what the majority of the country wants, and that it was something that he himself has been uh, fighting for. Carla. Indeed, Alejandro. So we're waiting for the first results on those first tables that are closed in the first booth, the first voting stations in Chile. So tell us more about the people that are there. We saw a lot of protests uh, the year before. Um, it's always students and workers, uh, feminist organizations who are joining uh, these uh, protests in Plaza Dignidad. Carla, this protest uh, is unique in my own experience in the world because you see these people, nobody, and I mean almost nobody, is following any leader or any organization, um, like a political party or even a social movement. What you say is right. Political parties, uh, trade unions, social movements have uh, supported, adhered to this movement, but this movement is still uh, headless. It, it's still uh, spontaneous, and that it's strength, and at the same time, in the long run, probably uh, it's weakness. But what you see here are all of these people were students, part of the revolt, student revolt in 2006 and 2011, that uh, involved or comprehended almost every student in the country, fighting for free education quality education and um, in, in general they have developed into a struggle for a new constitution uh, a new republic of rights so what you see here is mostly 
according to polls, 35% of these people are professionals with at least a university degree or a, a post degree uh, in uh, any discipline. Uh, what's still to be seen here is the working class. That's how it has to be said. The workers, the, the manual workers, are not mainly here. But what we saw today in La Victoria, the working class neighborhood that we often, we often go to, is that those people don't come here, but are firmly in support of change because they are the men, would be the main beneficiaries of the system that will break this country's inequality. So it's a, the class definition of the, the ideological definition, the organizational definition is still to be built. And there will be a lot of contradictions. Not everybody wants to hear the same thing. What unites these people is a new constitution, a new government, a new republic, and of course, the end of the Pineda government. If the results are as uh, decisive as uh, they seem to be, uh, the Pineda government is once again in trouble. Carla. Indeed, Alejandro, that was going to be my next question. What will be the repercussions in the local policies? Because we have uh, parliamentary and presidential elections uh, coming up. What would that um, look like in, for Piñera, as we see a lot of his numbers going down, and for the actual Congress today that they're expecting to be at least considered as part of this commission to rewrite the Constitution? What will happen to both parts of the government? I'm not hearing very well, but if I understood your question rightly, the political system, the, the, the institutional system is uh, so discredited among these people. If you go around and ask, they speak only bad things about the parliament politicians, uh, institutions, the police, everybody, everybody with few except. So what's going to happen? Uh, probably there will be a binary um, a binary development of this uh, by two ways. Uh, one way will be the institutional one with elections, uh, the, co the, co the constitutional convention, the, um, the, the, the four elections that we have next year. And on the other hand, the, the, the people will be getting organized in the territorial assemblies and deliberate on its own future. When those paths will, will actually defer for good, it's a matter of how big, how persistent, and how 